Hey everyone, my name is Joshua. Hey, what's up? It's Madison. Thank you for tuning into another video. We hope everyone is safe and healthy and being smart during this shelter in place. Today, we're gonna to be talking about five ways we as blind and visually impaired individuals can help our sighted peers. Before we begin, if you like our content, we definitely appreciate it if you could hit that like button. We'd also encourage you to subscribe to our channel. We post videos weekly and we definitely don't want you to miss out on any of it. So with that said, let's get on into it. Now, when we talk about helping our sighted peers, we're not talking about the different skills we can offer in order to complete a task. What we're talking about is the different approaches we can take um, in order to help people improve and strengthen their interactions with one another. Ways we can help our sighted peers better understand blindness. After watching this video, feel free to check out our playlist, Understanding Blindness. This playlist compiles all of the videos we posted on the topic of blindness, so you can check that out in the description down below. All right, so let's start off with number one, understanding that society was not originally created with blind or visually impaired people in mind. Now, I know that sounds harsh and I'm not saying it's acceptable, but it is reality. Up until recently, people with disabilities were more focused on surviving their disability rather than finding ways to embrace it and achieve success and independence. Fortunately, more things are becoming um, a lot more accessible. You know, we can see that there are different pieces of technology that we use on a daily basis with more accessible features. A lot more resources and services are available for us as we go about our professional and personal lives. And now we're moving on to point number two, which is don't confuse curiosity for ignorance. You may find yourself in a situation that goes like this. You're speaking with someone who is sighted, and mid-conversation they make a remark like, well, you don't look blind, or I'm so sorry, or what is that stick that you're using? These kind of comments can come out of the blue and may take you aback for a little bit, but before you go off the rails or before you make any more assumptions, here are some things that you should consider. Disability advocacy has become a really recent thing. It's becoming more commonplace to talk about the independence of the disability community now more than ever, and because of that, not many people are educated about this. Some people were raised in a certain culture where people with disabilities weren't held up to the same standards as they are now and that's what's led them up to believe that people with disabilities live a certain way or are treated a certain way you should be aware that people simply are just not used to interacting with someone who is blind so when you think about that and circle back to our situation that we've created for ourselves a lot of people do want to be educated because chances are if they're making a remark like that they are just not able to communicate their curiosity in a way that seems friendly, at least in your eyes. Take advantage of that time to teach them about blindness. Why not tell them about your condition? Why not tell them about how you see? If someone says, what's that stick you're holding? You can correct them and say that it's a cane. But with that said, not everyone is going to want to communicate with you further on the topic and that's something that you have to gauge on your own. And also, I think it's important to note that it's okay if they don't wanna talk about that with you because you know if they feel uncomfortable and you're getting that vibe, you don't need to push them on further or feel offended that they don't wanna to talk to you. Like I said, it could be a cultural thing, they just may feel uncomfortable, they may be in a rush, you never know, and you don't wanna make any assumptions. All right, so number three, be calm and be patient. Now, I know this could be hard sometimes. It could be frustrating when people are constantly asking you the same questions. They may ask questions that can be perceived as ignorant or offensive, or they may not be understanding the point that you're trying to get across. I can't even count the number of times that I've had to explain what my cane is for, you know, how I can use my iPhone even though I'm blind, or people asking me whether or not I need help going up or down a set of stairs. All of those situations can get old real quick, but I see it as an opportunity to educate people in the different adaptive tools and techniques that I use in order to be independent, some of which they may not be aware of, or I just let them know that I'm perfectly fine and I can do things on my own. Now, of course, there are going to be some times where people are a little bit more aggressive 
you know, they may be bombarding you with a lot of questions. Um, if you're going about your day, someone may grab you thinking they're being helpful in leading you in the direction they think you're trying to go. But even in these situations, I think, you know, it's good to be calm and take control of the situation. I'd say it's better to be assertive as opposed to aggressive. Let people know that you are perfectly fine doing things on your own. You don't need help. You know, you can let them know that you don't appreciate them grabbing you, but you know, the situation does not have to escalate. Or when people are bombarding you with a lot of questions, um, it's okay to let them know that you appreciate their curiosity, but you just don't feel like talking to anyone at that time. Whether or not you have a disability, people are entitled to their personal space so you know it's okay to let people know that you just like to take time to yourself but overall I'd say it's better to one just take time to yourself or use the situation as a teachable moment and you know try to avoid any unpleasant experiences for both parties number four is accepting assistance I used to be one of those people who would get really mad when a stranger would come up to me and ask if I needed help the reason why is because I am prideful. I have worked this hard to be an independent, blind woman. We actually have a whole video on this topic called why I've struggled with asking for help. We can link that in the description down below and I'll also put it in the end card up in the right hand corner of this video. However, we can unpack this topic really briefly. So. Let's get into it. Sometimes it's okay to try things yourself because you know that you have the capability to do that. But if you are experiencing some problems in public where it looks like you're struggling, you gotta step back and reassess the situation and think, am I really able to complete this on my own? Yes, you will need to accept that you are limited and yes, you will need to put down your pride, but honestly, it's okay to accept assistance. Also, it's reassuring that a stranger can come up to you and offer their time to help you. If you do decide to ask for help, here are some tips in order to make that experience more positive for you and the sighted stranger. When I say to know your limits, you need to be aware of the problem yourself and you also should be able to communicate that in a way that's understandable to the person who's helping you. The stranger needs to know a summarized version of your problem in order to help you in the best way possible. And that's why it's a lot helpful for the both of you if you can explain that to them in a concise, but descriptive way. Try to find solutions with them, collaborate with them. Also, just be patient with them. Emulate confidence and know what you want, but also try to communicate it in a friendly way. At the end, thank them for their time. They are offering their time to help you. And whether it's their job or not, that is just the benefit of living in a community full of good citizens. We want more helpful people in the world. And we also want to encourage people to help people with disabilities if need be, so that in the future, if they happen to come across someone else who is blind, they will be prepared and will know how to do it the next time around. Finally, number five, avoid the us versus them mentality. Now, what do I mean by that? It's common for people to distinguish the differences between two groups, you know, we could say the blind community and sighted people, but rather than isolating them, it's important to try to find ways to collaborate with one another. Now, I know that sounds like I'm trying to say people should be in constant harmony, singing kumbaya, and in an ideal world, things would go smoothly for everyone, but the fact is, is that people have their own values, they have different priorities, they don't often see eye to eye and they often butt heads. But I think when we have these discussions, when we point out what's going on, that's when better change is made. We can left, definitely learn from each other's differences. Side of people can learn about how to make things more accessible from talking with blind people and blind people can learn more about their community by talking with sighted people. Sighted people won't fully understand what it means to be blind or visually impaired. You know, they just don't experience it as we do on a daily basis, but we can make them more aware so that it allows them to be more considerate in the things they do and the things they say when they are interacting with us. So we should definitely try to find ways to collaborate with each other. We can do that by being assertive in our advocacy and also um, open to um, hearing what other people have to say. 
um, trying to find ways to improve our interactions with one another. Well, that about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching and learning more about how the blind community can be more helpful to the sighted community in terms of advocating for ourselves, in terms of spreading disability awareness and making it a positive experience for everyone. If you have any other tips, feel free to give the comments down below. Anyone who is sighted, comment down below on how to make interacting with the blind community a more positive experience. We love input, we love sparking discussions, and we want to encourage more interaction between the blind and sighted communities. We really enjoyed making this video. This is a different experience for us. So let us know what you think of this format. With quarantine, we're just trying to think of the most creative solutions to film videos. Well, we hope that you are safe and healthy during this time. Please, we encourage you to stay productive, stay healthy, stay positive, and stay home. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you would like to watch our other videos about understanding blindness, or you would like to support our 2020 Home and Prize video entry, please check the links listed in the description box below. See you in the next one!